We are live. Okay. This is Saturday night, <laughs> December the 7th. Can you believe it? December the 7th, 2019. We are live doing a live craft show tonight. And if you're watching this at a later time, you can zip through the boring parts to get to the fun parts if you want to. We're going to be doing crafts, and I will be interacting with the people in chat as they start coming in the room. Joe's in the house. <laughs> I say hi, Joe. Hi, ladies. Abby says hi. Didn't you? So, um... Let's see if I can find you guys on the chat room. So, it is Saturday. It is, it is. Here we go. Oh, hi, Joan. Joan Bell's in the room. Hi, Joan. Hi, sweetie. You're first tonight. Hi, Joan. Woohoo! <laughs> she says, hi, Joan. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I was just getting on, getting warmed up, getting my desk cleaned off, thinking about things and wondering what I was going to do next. And I guess I'll clean my desk off. So going through some junk mail. And I got a new catalog. <laughs> yeah, it's just you and me. So, uh, <laughs> how are you doing today? What you doing? You doing anything fun? Doing anything? This is a little catalog. I like little catalogs because sometimes you can find goofy pictures in it to cut out for your I might need that tonight we're going to do a reverse collage a little bit and I need some Christmas stuff well thank you I was on uh, Thursday night and it seemed to go pretty good didn't have any problems Tuesday I had problems and um Tanya McGuire said that she had problems with um, the internet too on on that night, same night. Yeah, I have too, Joan. I've had company for since Thanksgiving, <laughs> and um, I've got um, sent one daughter home today, and the other daughter came back from a cruise. So she she'll be coming through the door any minute. They they uh, was out running around a little bit today. So uh, he might be cute. I'm going to be doing uh, getting my America book out here in a minute. And this catalog's got a couple of cute things I can. A couple of cute things that I might be able to use in my collage. So I might as well take advantage of it, and it's 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 a snow scene, so I might be able to use Christmas trees and things like that in it. I got the Grinch. There's another little tree. I could just put trees all all over the page. I can see it now. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. I can put cat, Fessy cut him out and put him on the snow scene. Isn't he cute? We went um, out to eat yesterday. And then we went downtown uh, over by the beach. And they had um, an intro, intro <laughs> seasonal December lighting of the lights. And they had a little dog parade. It was so cute. <laughs> there were dogs all dressed up in their little 
Santa Claus outfits and lights and ears and all kinds of things. Hi, Sherry. How's Sherry doing? How is Sherry? So, uh, see, I could put him up. Put him in there. Oh, I'm just going to have such a cute page tonight. I could just feel it in my bones. I can just feel it in my bones. It's going to be cute. Even the front cover. <laughs> oh, look, there's another snowman. That'll work. There's another tree. I bet you I've gotten. Five different trees out of this book already. Already. There's another dog. There's another little Christmas tree. And another Christmas tree. There's going to be all kinds of Christmas trees in this, in this page tonight. Oh, you're under the weather with a sore throat. Well, I'm sorry, Sherry. I hope you get to feeling better. That's no fun. No fun at all. So, um... There's another tree. We'll take it. There's another tree. I think I'm going to pass the trees up now. I can go back to it if I need to. I'll just look for some Christmas decorations now. Here's another tree. There's another tree. My goodness. It's going to be a page of trees tonight. Page of trees. I better quit. So, hi everybody coming into the room. Hello, hello everybody. The, uh, Thursday night we did some felting. And uh, I'm going to do some more felting tonight too. And give you all a another lesson we did a heart the other day and i blended the wool together with two different collars and um so tonight i thought i would try to do a dryer ball it's a hard time okay sherry winter is hard yeah and you're up in Canada, so it's very cold where you are. Very, very cold. Um, let me go ahead and clean my desk off. And I will scoot this over. And... See what I can do. That's cute. She might go on my Christmas page too. Very nicely. I think it was a Christmas card. Here's a tag. I could put a tag on it. And here's another Christmas tree from a Christmas tree card. I can use that and I can use him. So, yeah, I will. So let me scoot this over. There's my stapler. I'll be looking for it. Might be looking for it lately. There's some more scissors. 
put some things away. I'm going to lay those right there. These are some Happy Meal that I got. And I'm going to put it over here out of the way, too. So, okay. That's better. I've got some money. Oh, okay. You saw some of it from Thursday night? Okay. Yeah, I did this little heart. And um, so you can go back and, and watch the video. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, for the rest of this month, just be talking to you about the felting and do, 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 inter, do some introduction to it. <laughs> My company's coming in and Abby's barking. She'll quit here in a minute. <laughs> Hi, Colleen. Hi, dear. So, um, yeah, we will, I will be talking about felting off and on all through December. And then in January, we're going to uh, do some projects with it. And if I can just, you know, introduce little bits of felting. Uh, between you know now and the end of the year, I can you all can get warmed up to some of the techniques, and I don't have to explain everything from the beginning anymore. And uh, uh, so tonight, um, I got some of this wool, and I talked about different types of wool. And there's there's tons of different kinds of different t kinds of sheep. So the wool from each sheep, uh, some of them are different than the others. Now this wool here is called a core C O R E core wool wool, and it's not as smooth and silky as the merino wool. The merino wool is a type of sheep and it has a beautiful a beautiful soft wool uh, the wool is much softer and it's uh, it washes nicely and they can condition it and they can make this wool much prettier than the core wool wool even though this is pretty wool it's 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 a little bit more frizzier in the in the in the stretch of the of the hair on the wool. So this wool here is good to use as a filler, as a filler. It's cheaper. This wool is cheaper than this wool. This is about uh, uh, like a dollar a pound, and this is like two dollars a pound in the prices. And when you're making something and you're doing like an animal and, and the insides of the wool, insides of the project, you don't really care what's on the inside. You want to use something that felt. You want to use something that you can use that's inexpensive and then save your more expensive wool for the outside for the decorations. And I wanted to show you all how to do a dryer ball tonight. And... Um, uh, you're going to be making a ball, and you're not going to you're not going to be doing it like that, and then and then and then try to make the ball. That's not a good way to do it because the inside will be too soft, and your ball won't be firm enough to do the job that it's going to do in the dryer. Because you want to you're going to be putting this in the in the dryer to help dry your clothes. So when you start off making a dryer ball, you want to roll your your wool up as tight as you can, twist it and, and roll it up as tight as you can and into a ball. And we're going to start off really, really tight. And then as we as we roll, we're going to turn it, turn it one knot, one to the right, 
and then roll it again and then you're going to take your needle and you're going to felt it a little bit i'm not poking it down to the to the um, table and you could do this on your on your phone so you can protect your needle and so anyway i'm putting this as tight as i can in a ball and i'm just felting this one little part down right here between my fingers I am not going over my fingers. I'm not poking at my fingers. I'm watching what I'm doing because we don't want to poke ourselves when we felt. So here's the beginning of our ball. You can get tools that help you roll your wool up. And these tools are like the ends of, they remind me of the ends of paintbrushes and things. Um, you can use the end of a paintbrush. Let me see if I can't find a paintbrush. I know I've got one. <laughs> Joan sent me a picture. Okay. Oh. <laughs> she made some signs. Oh, these are your cards. Oh, wow, Joan. Cool. I know what those are. Oh, no. No, you hurt your fingers bleeding inside and my tendons are stretched too far from wrestling. This is Ethan. Hi, Ethan. <laughs> JSC is my grandson. Joan said she painted on the back of these these cards and these are these are carding cones they look like this on the other side they've got the wires on the other side to comb the wool so uh hi hi ethan so you hurt yourself from wrestling oh my goodness oh my goodness Oh no. Well, are you uh, at home, Ethan? Are you home? Hi, Nancy. <laughs> now, JSC is my grandson, guys. <laughs> Hi, Deb. Are you at home, Ethan? He was just down here this last week. I'm fine. It's not that bad. Okay. Good. 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 Um, but Joan just sent me a picture of these card carding paddles. And they're made from wood. And they're antique. And she painted on the back of them. These were her grandmothers. Your grandmothers? Or your mother's. Let's see. I've done forgot if they were her mother or grandmother. And they're, uh, but they're used to card or comb the wool. Okay. I got mine, your great granny. Okay, Joan, it's her great. I have those on the wall for decorations. They are so pretty. Oh, wow. Now, I got mine from the Dollar Tree, and mine is a cat brush for kitty cats, and it works fine. Sometimes the carding tools that you find they don't make them as much as they used as you know like they used to and they're expensive if you go to a a shop that sells these kind of things they're very expensive to to buy and um and sometimes we can resort to inexpensive things to get by with to find out if we want to continue to do this hobby now, if something ever would ever come up and I found a pair like this at a at an antique shop or something, 
you know, I might splurge and get them because I'm interested into the hobby of it all, you know. So I'm interested in the tools and things. So those, thank you, Joan, for showing those. Oh my gosh. And your artwork is beautiful too. So she did the barn. And then she did a snowman. Oh no, that's not a barn. That's a, that's not a snowman. That's a, the silo. Okay. Farmhouse. That is really, really cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. So anyway, when you're, when you're, uh, when you get into felting, you will discover lots of tools that you can get to help you. And one of them would be uh, some kind of a wooden uh, handle of, off of a paintbrush or something, something to help you get your item tighter. Now I'm just doing this by hand and I'm doing, I'm rolling it up. And then as I roll, I'm going to felt it a little bit to felt it down. So I'm felting, I'm felting a ball and I'm watching where my fingers are. I'm on my sponge so I won't break my needle and you, you have to be very careful. And something that I did not get to do is tell you all, uh, you know, these needles will break. They can break. I could snap it right now if I wanted to. But if you ever break your needle, I want you to promise me that you'll find the broken tip. Find both, both broken parts. Tape them to a piece of cardboard before you put them in the garbage. But I want you to find this tip. I don't want it to fall on the carpet or on the floor to where you could step on it and, out, and have an ouchie. Okay, because it's so pointy and so sharp. I'm always afraid of dropping it in the couch and then sitting on it. That's just not, that's not a happening thing in my house. So if you ever break a needle to anybody who wants to do this felting, if you ever break the needle, you have to promise me that you will find the broken part. Find both parts, tape them to a piece of cardboard before you discard them. So, so that nobody will ever sit on it or hurt themselves on it in the future. So, and I will be saying that, uh, I will be saying that over and over and over because I'm a safety buff type person. So I felted that down and you can see it turning into a little ball. So I'm going to squish it down some more and I'm going to tuck in the ends and I'm going to, I'm going to felt it down again. I rolled it some more. I'm going to lay it on my sponge and I'm going to felt it down some more. So this is felting. I'm, I'm rolling it up to make a dryer, dryer ball. So I'm just tacking it down. Uh, not spending a lot of time on it. Just tacking it down so that when I let go of it, it'll stay in a ball so now i'm just going to turn it i can i can even tear this off of the big roll and you can you can continue to roll this up and tuck the corners in and the ends in and keep rolling it in a ball over and over felt it down some more so it stays in a ball watching where your fingers are at all times I felted it down in that little area. Now I'm going to roll it around some more and felt down the other ends. Just one end at a time. Making a ball. And uh, let's see. Okay. And uh, here we go again on the end. I can roll it around, but I'm watching where my fingers are, okay? I'm, I'm watching my fingers at all times. And I'm felting.
and when I get satisfied with that little ball I can add some more to it because it's not big enough well you want a dryer ball to be like a baseball size even a softball uh, a softball is bigger than a baseball so I'm I'm adding some more felt some more wool to my ball I'm rolling it up tucking in the ends turning it and rolling it again I'm going to sit it back up on my sponge and felt a little bit to hold it down in place I don't know what I did there ice cream <laughs> all right yes there are Joan there are little barbs on the needle this is a, a special needle it does not have a hole in it so it's not for sewing it's a special needle for felting and you can get different kind of needles There's several different varieties. A lot of them are in a triangle. You can actually see the triangle uh, with the magnifying glass. And, and as you can see, this, this needle is bent. I have bent this needle, you know, uh, by being kind of rough with it, I guess you could say. And uh, I don't know if you can see the bent in it, but it does bend a little bit. <laughs> but it's got three sides to it of a triangle. And then it's got these little tiny notches that they uh, make in the needle. Uh, they go, the notches go the opposite direction. So it snags. It snags the wool when you stab it into the wool. It snags them downward and it snags them back up, snags them back and forth. And the snags are like going like this within the fibers and it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter until it, they're, they're all snagged together. And that is felting. So, yes there are and uh i told I, I was supposed to mail a, a needle out to somebody and i think it was sharon and i told some of the girls uh, if they wanted to do this felting project with me that they would need to get some needles need to get a sponge and need to buy some wool and if you can't get out of the house to get them i volunteered to send you a needle and a little bit of wool and uh, you just need to just tell me if you need anything because i didn't want it to be a a burden if you just want to try it and see if you like it it's it's a it's a sit still type of a project. You have to sit still. <laughs> you you can't um, It's a it's a solitude of a hobby and you have to sit still and do it. You can't be uh, nervous or running around or you can't be busy with children with this project. You cannot have little children around. They cannot do this. If they if they were to hurt themselves or fall on a needle or damage themselves some way, uh, you that's not what it's for. This is an adult hobby, felting, and there are beginner kits that you can buy to help you get started on this.
so yeah it's it's very i like doing it i like doing the felting and and i got a ways to go to uh, make this a bigger ball so i'm going to continue to roll it i'm going to, I'm going to roll it up a little bit and then i'm going to turn it and roll it that direction a little bit to keep it a round ball so it's not lopsided Now, like I said, if you were to wall this all up at once and start felting on it, you would not have a really hard center. And um, I have tried it that way. And this is the best way to do it is by rolling it from a little point and getting bigger and bigger like a snowman. You want to start with the middle and get it good and hard to affirm. I'm watching where my hands are at all times. I'm not going anywhere near my, my fingers. You know, my fingers are underneath the ball. I roll the ball over a little bit and I go away from my fingers. You have to pay attention to what you're doing. You have to be gentle with your needle or you will break it. I know I'm going fast. But I've been doing it a while and I have a tendency to get in a hurry. <laughs> but you can't do that. You cannot be in a hurry and do this project. You have to uh, do it slow and enjoy it, you know. But you're felting the felting the ball. You can buy dryer balls at Walmart now. They have them. Uh, I think they're three or four dollars for a couple of them. And they're not, they're affordable. They are affordable. And if you were to get one of those balls, get those dryer balls at Walmart, then with the, the wool that I send you, you can decorate your, your uh, dryer ball if you wanted to. But since I have the wool, I'm going to make my own. And I don't even use the dryer balls. Um, I've made them, but I've given them away. <laughs> That's what I do. I make things and give them away. So hello, everybody coming in the room. Hello, hello. I know you're here. I see the numbers, but I don't see your your names. <laughs> but welcome, welcome, welcome. Everybody's invited. I can't believe the holidays are flying through. Hi, Janice. Yeah, a little bit. Well, we we both had our own channels, Janice. We both had our own channels, and we 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 partnered up for this a season for a few months, and now we're back to our own channels. We're just doing our own thing. <laughs> no right or wrong. <laughs> Is she on? Is Jan is Colleen on, Janice? Were you over there? Um, you're invited to go and see her. I have absolutely no problems with uh, visiting uh, other people. And um, I have uh, nothing against anybody. Um, we're we're all we all have our own styles of arting and our own uh, ways of arting and uh, and you can't expect to everybody to understand everything about me <laughs> that's fine janice good i'm glad and um 
I'm not, I'm not a, um, I'm kind of a loner in, in life. And, um, I don't, I don't have people that I call every day or talk to every day. And, um, I don't, uh, have a group of girls that I hang out with day in and day out. And, um, I'm not a, uh, I'm just not, I'm, I'm just not that way in socializing. I'm not very good at it. And, and I know that my, I do art and I know that I'm a, I'm an artist in a sense, but I think I'm, I am more of a crafter. <laughs> I consider myself a crafter because I'm not professionally trained or I haven't taken any classes in anything like this felting. I've, I learned it on my own and I've learned it by watching videos on my own. And, um, I'm just, I just don't think I'm that, um, I'm just not that good with a lot of stuff. Hi, Suzanne. <laughs> but I do enjoy doing things and I do enjoy trying things and I enjoy having fun, you know, so, um, but if anybody wants to go over there and see her and check her out and see what she's doing, please do. <laughs> please do. <laughs> I, I, I know. Hi, Sue. Hi, honey. <laughs> I'm a I'm more of a crafter than than an artist, and I but I do say that I have a craft I have a craft show. So this is my craft show, you see. But um, uh, I like to do lots of things, and I'm glad I do. And I and I think I uh, I think a lot of people that uh, that watch me like you guys enjoy. Uh, the stuff that I do and no matter how how corny it is yes it is it's it's going to be it's going to be a dryer ball <laughs> I started out with a little tiny knot and I rolled it and felted it rolled it and felted it each time I just kept rolling it and felting, felting it and um and and it got tighter and tighter and the reason why is uh it's just the best way to do it <laughs> well good hi Giovanna hi I think I've got everybody out of the woodwork woodwork now thanks for saying hi <laughs> so anyway um I'm just doing a little dryer ball and you have to hold it kind of tight but you got to be careful not to poke yourself you cannot poke yourself. That's against the rules. And um, I'm almost, almost done, but I'm not done yet. I'm going to poke on this for quite a while. I'm always here tonight. It's a bit late. Okay. Well, better late than never, honey. All I've done, all I've been doing is poking on this ball. <laughs> But it started out as nothing. So you, if you haven't seen it, you can uh, roll back to the beginning of the of the evening uh, about 20 minutes ago and see see how I actually started it. So uh, the dryer ball, you can buy them at Walmart really kind of cheap and they're affordable. And uh, but if you buy your own wool, you could you can make more out for your money if you don't mind doing the labor. And um, the core wool, this is core wool, wool, C-O-R-E, is cheaper than the pretty collared wool. And there's another wool also called batting wool. And batting is done in, in, in a sheet form instead of a, a roving wool, wool. The roving wool is um, the roving wool is like this. And the batting, the core wool is, is like is in this format in a strand. 
but the batting wool is in a sheet. And sometimes you can buy batting to put in the middle of, of quilts that kind of batting and it's in a sheet format and it's, you know, it rolls out in wider, four, wider pieces. And the batting wool is usually done in a, in a flat surface and you can use it to, uh, if you're doing a, a quilting piece and you want it, you want it to stand up, you can put that batting down and, and then sew on top of it. A lot of sewers use the batting wool, but anyway, you can buy it cheaper than the merino wool, which is the uh, collared wool. And you want to use the cheaper wools when you're doing things like this, because this here is only about 50 cents, whereas this here is probably about three or four dollars. So mm, you're going to weigh the cost around. And so you want to use something more less more economical. Okay, good. Yes, I'm I'm just doing inner little snippets of um tips between now and January, Giovanna, and I will be doing something more stable in January so that we can do a project together. And um you don't have to have a, a cookie cutter, but it helps you know, it helps if you are not, maybe, maybe you just want to make a, 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 a gingerbread man out of a piece of paper, you know, for a pattern. So you can lay down and see the shape, you know, and make it easy for yourself. Yes. Yes, you do, Deb. You learn by just watching. And that's how I did. That's how I learned. And uh, we will we will definitely get into that and see here's a little gingerbread man. It's a sticker. So this might be my inspiration, you know, to do a gingerbread man. So you might find an inspiration, a picture, something from a magazine or whatever. You know, you can print something off on your computer and find you an inspiration. And we'll do something real, real easy at first. Yep. I had a, a, I have a gingerbread co cookie cutter. Did your brand man? I have it right here, right in front of my fingertips. To do with my cookie cutters. They're here. They're covered up. What are they doing? They're in a bucket. They're in a bucket. And well, I've got some other this the gingerbread man's not right here. I've just misplaced momentarily misplaced it. But cookie cutters like this is what I was talking about. And you can use them. Any kind of cookie cutter. Here's a bigger one that was, uh, it's plastic and it's from a children's set. You know, so I, I have a lot of cookie cutters because uh, I've collected them over the years and I use them in my clay. So, but uh, you can use, you know, any size of a cookie cutter that you that you happen to have you can pick them up really inexpensive at the second hand store sometimes <laughs> well good deb i'm glad you got it i'm sure you're enjoying it <laughs> um okay okay colleen's got family i understand take care of your family you can watch it later but um, the reason why I said cookie cutter is, is because it's a shape. And just to get you to learn how to do the felting and get you used to felting. And then, then, you, can, then you can be creative after you learn your basics. And I wanted you to learn a couple of little basics to get the hang of it. And that way you won't break your needles and you won't, um, you, you can think about, the fibers that you want to use and you can think about 
uh, the size of a thing, whatever you want to make, whatever you're interested in. And you can take it from there and and uh, and fly <laughs> and fly with it. But um, uh, but anyway, I did the heart uh, Thursday night and tonight I just did the, the dryer ball and I'm not finished with it. I'm still felting on it. There are several tutorials on how to make these. And what you do, uh, some of the girls, they'll take these balls. They'll make up about three of them. And then they'll take a pair of pantyhose. And they'll take a, a, a knee high or any kind of pantyhose. And they will put the ball in the pantyhose. And they'll, they'll line like three balls up. And in between the balls, they will tie a piece of yarn and separate the balls. And the reason why you separate the balls is because if they're together with another felted project, they might felt together. <laughs> so, so there's a reason why they tie a string in between the balls. And then they throw these balls in with the, in the pantyhose into the washer and they wash it and, and put a little bit of soap with it and it agitates and it felts it the rest of the way by water. Um, you can do it the way I'm doing it right now. You do not have to use water. You can felt it completely by single needle felting uh, alone. You can still felt it, uh, but it just takes a little bit more work. It's more time consuming. But I enjoy this action. Um, I enjoy it. I have fun with it. And I don't mind doing it this way. Um, another reason why I do it this way is because I don't have any pantyhose. <laughs> I used to have pantyhose, but they all dry rotted. <laughs> so I threw them all out. <laughs> Does anybody have that situation at home? Has anybody ever done that? Pair of pantyhose that you don't wear anymore and they dry rot. Am I the only one? <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only one? So anyway, I'm making a dryer ball and uh, and I'd like to make it a little bit bigger than this. Yep, that's the way mine was. They dry rotted. I had to, all the elastic was gone out of them, and <laughs> I haven't worn them either. <laughs> and I live in Florida now, so there's really no need for pantyhose down here. It is just way too warm for pantyhose. Now we went, um, we went to San Augustine this week to the Festival of Lights. And it was in, it was like 60 degrees and we were having a cold snap and I had on a pair of blue jeans and I had on a pair. Oh, good Joyce. You're spinning your yarn. Good, good, good. Oh, are you spinning yarn or spinning in buffering? Wrong kind of spinning, I bet. You're buffering, aren't you? <laughs> She said she was spinning. I thought she was spinning yarn. Sorry, Joyce. <laughs> but anyway, I had on shoes and I had on socks and I had on uh, a tank top and then another little short sleeve shirt and then another long sleeve shirt over that. For And then I had a coat and I had a scarf. <laughs> So, and I didn't get cold. I did not get cold. So, and that was 60 degrees. But we were outside all evening too. And at the Festival of Lights, we rode around on this uh, tram, this car, this, this tram that they had. Everybody got on it and drove us around the town for, to see the lights. And it was a festival thing that we went to see. So, uh, yeah, 
but uh, but no, I don't wear I don't wear pantyhose anymore. I don't I don't think I could handle them with uh, my my personal heated moments that I have all the time. <laughs> I know it, Joan. <laughs> it feels good down here. <laughs> it feels good. But now we do get uh, it can it does get down into the 30s here where I live. I'm in central in the middle of Florida. I'm not at the top and I'm not at the bottom. And I am on the East Coast, but I am centrally located in Florida. And we do we can get frost um, We can get frost uh, down here where I live, but it's usually it usually lasts for a couple of hours, you know, and then it warms right back up. So the frost doesn't stay on very long. I do too, Sue, with a passion, but there's nothing I can do about them. <laughs> They're personal summers. Those are my personal summers. Yeah, I have those. So anyway, if you weren't here earlier, um, I started making the dryer ball. You can you can roll back to the um, front of the uh, hi Lisa, uh, the front of the uh, video to see how I started the ball, the dryer ball. It's real tight in the middle. It's real tight, and uh, there's you can do this with wet felting or you can do it with the needle felting. Either way, and um, <laughs> Arlene Arlene texted me and said, Oh, this is really funny. <laughs> oh gosh. Lisa, you came in at the at the in a in a particular moment where we were talking about our pantyhoses dry rotten. <laughs> so Lisa knows exactly what I'm talking about, how you put these in pantyhose and you tie it with a piece of yarn and then you put another ball in and you tie it with a piece of yarn so they look like little nest eggs in your pantyhose then you can put them in your washing machine and wash them hi norma <laughs> hi guys <laughs> so anyway i'm needle felting my dryer ball because i don't have any pantyhose you can also use um, netting. Uh, I, I also like to use the shears, uh, curtain shears. I have some sheer material. I think it used to be a curtain, but I've used it for other things in my arts and my crafts. And you can use uh, shears, uh, curtain shears, that type of fabric, slicky fabric. And the, uh, the balls will not felt to it. Uh, you want to use a slicky material so that the balls won't felt to the, the, the fabric when you put it in the washing machine. Yeah, there you go, Lisa. <laughs> so if you go to the secondhand store and you pick you up some, you know, go to the women's department, you might find some real cheap pantyhose over there. Somebody's throwing them out and then you can use them to felt your balls for your dryer balls. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll work. That'll work. <laughs> so anyway, all, mo all the month of December, I thought I would give you some felting tips. And then in January, we can do some felting together. Okay, because I'm getting ready to quit this and get into our reverse collage. But as you can see, I'm just rotating the ball and I'm needle felting it down, being very careful. I know where my fingers are at all times. I know where my fingers are. If you use a needle and your needle breaks, does anybody know what they do when their needle breaks? I'm going to drill this, this, this rule. This is a rule. This is a number one rule in, in felting. When your needle breaks, what do you do? And the first thing you do is you find the other tip that's broken. You do not leave it in your felting material. Do not drop it onto the couch or the floor or the carpet. You find that point that has broken off and you tape it to a piece of 
old cardboard or just something that so that you can discard it properly discard it in the trash <laughs> cry <laughs> yeah if it's your last one you cry if it's your last needle i have broken lots and lots of needles probably oh you learn real fast not to break them uh probably i've broken at least five at least and you never know you might get a needle that uh is made out of cheap steel yes it's very important to find the lost broken part find the broken part do not do not do anything else until you find it <laughs> it's craft with beth's hands <laughs> the needles break because they're fragile they're metal but they're not unbreakable why do the needles break the needles break because they're little and you can see i've already bent this one i have bent this needle so this needle could break at any time and the reason why we have tiny needles is we have different size needles these needles come in different gauges now i can't don't ask me the numbers because i don't know what the numbers are but when I ordered my needles, I got small, medium, and large. And and they're very, very similar in size. You really can't tell them apart unless you have like a magnifying glass. Sometimes they're color coded on the tip on these little curvy parts. They're color coded and you can tell which one's bigger than the other. When you're doing fine detailing work, um, uh, like eyes and and let me find something that I've detailed. <laughs> this is a poor example, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. Yes, the angle that you poke and then you then you might move your hand to the left without you have to pull back straight, go in straight and pull back straight. You can't go in and then turn it over there and come back out. You'll break your needle. You snaps. They snap. But if you're going to do some fine artwork with your needle like doing eyes and nose and mouth and things tiny tiny little things like this you go you start with a bigger needle and then you go with the little and graduate down to the smaller needles to get to the fine felting do you know when you has anybody ever finished a, a piece of wood and stripped the paint off of it and sand it you sand your wood down and then they tell you to use a finer grit, sand it down, and then wipe it off again with a, a, a linen towel that has a little bit of linseed oil on it to get the sand, the little bits of wood off of the wood. You know how you go from a, a grade of high sand, heavy sanding down to a thin sand, thinner and thinner and thinner until it's smooth as butter? That's exactly what the needles come in. They come in a coarse and then a medium and then a smaller, a finer, finer felting needle to make finer holes. And, and it's, for, it's for sculpturing and fine details if you're doing, if you're working on eyes and if you're working on your uh, more delicate situations. When you watch some of these people that I talk about, and one of them is this uh, Sarah girl. When you, I did put her name, and I, uh, I did put her on my Facebook page. Hi, Arlene. <laughs> okay, Arlene. This girl here does forest animals. And oh my gosh, they're so gorgeous. The bunnies and the rabbits, their ears and their noses and their little feet are detailed. And and she uses she uses the heavy needles and then she uses the fine dainty needles to do the delicate parts. So that's the difference between the needles. But but uh, it doesn't really matter in what I'm trying to teach you which size you have. Uh, I'm not I'm not going into that part of the 
teaching yet. If that's advanced, that would be advanced. Thank you, Joe. Joe is my servant tonight and he just filled my coffee cup up. Thank you, Joe. So, but I just wanted to touch bases um, and a few tips. So that's all I'm going to tell you, talk about tonight with felting, unless you all have another specific question. Uh, so we're working on a dryer ball. So I'll work on this again Tuesday and put another layer, a couple layers on it to make it a little bit bigger. And then I'll show you how I decorate it. I know it, isn't he? Thank you. He's he's a keeper. So, uh, you know, we did we did the the heart the other night and and the dryer ball tonight. So I'm gonna put this away till till Tuesday, and we'll we'll talk uh, more about felting next week. Okay. Now I did offer. <laughs> Everybody's saying thanks for the coffee. He left. You're <laughs> so if anybody needs a needle, you need to let me know or message me. Okay. If you if you can't get out to get to get you a needle, you message me. And uh, the only thing we need for January is the sponge, a needle, and some of the wool, the roving wool. And um Now, <laughs> we'll get into something else. So, uh, we talked a little bit about cookie cutters. And we can do we can do gingerbread men and all this stuff. Suzanne made a heart. Good girl, Suzanne. I'm glad you did. What color is your heart? Is it red? I did pink and purple. So, okay. Are we good? Are we doing good? <laughs> um, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Um, let me show you something that Joan shared with me. Joan had um, some carding brushes from her great grandmother. Look at these. And Joan painted on the back of them. Isn't that awesome? Her great grandmother. Here's the other one. I would have loved to seen what she made with these. What she I would have loved to seen the wool that she used. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Joan. <laughs> So, anybody else doing reverse collage with me tonight? We did the beach the other day, uh, Tuesday. We did the beach. And I did go back and put the plane in. And my glue tore the paper. And I put a ribbon on the uh, fence. Okay, Lisa, resting your shoulder. Okay. Wow. That's awesome, Joan. And uh, so this was my uh, Tuesday. I got to get this cat in here so you can see this cat over here. My table's just not big enough. I wanted you to see the 
kitty cat. <laughs> there we go. So this was Tuesday, and then Thursday, I did a, or was that Thursday? Time flies when you're having fun. Then we picked this one out to do next. Your hand is hurting. Okay. Deb said her hand's hurting. A wine bag. I'm making a lady with a beehive hairdo for my version. Oh, how cute. Yes, Giovanna. Joan, Joan's mother lost her mom when she was 13. So her mother lost her mama when she was a little girl. Yeah, it was her grandmother. So, uh, so anyway, I do have a few things that I could put on here and start. And you know what, guys? Do you, would you all like to do a, a pick 10 tonight? I was thinking on doing a pick 10. I work on this for a few minutes and then we'll do a pick 10. And um, I just tore out a bunch of Christmas trees out of a catalog that I'm going to put on here. I want that one. And I found the Grinch. Okay, Suzanne's going to watch. I think I'll do a pick 10 in a minute. I am ready to do something. Some kind of collaging. Okay. And uh, I'll go ahead and uh, get our cards out. And I'm going to tell you the prompts in advance so that you can put them on in any order. Um, I like kind of like doing that better than putting them on one at a time. It makes it easier on the background if you can put the collar down first. And... Uh, make a page it makes a prettier page we're going to put the Grinch on there yes Joyce we're sorry to hear that that was hard To lose your sister and your best friend. I got a couple of Christmas cards here and I can fussy cut them out a little bit. Like that. And 
And I got a Christmas tag I could put on something in the corner. Here's another Christmas card. Of the girls on a sled. Having fun. For sure. For sure. Does anybody remember getting on a sled like this and going down standing up? I did. <laughs> we did. <laughs> I remember those days. And this one has a wreath in it. I thought I'd cut it out. The sky. Well, I was thinking about um, doing some splatters first. Should I make it a night scene with all the Christmas lights on it? Oh, we had inner tubes too. And you know what? We we lived in, uh, I hate to say we lived out in the country because it was just three miles out of city limits. So we weren't really that far out in the country. Okay. But we did live on the river. And we had quite a bit of land, and there was a place uh, not close to the house, but on the other end of the property, there was some valleys and, and uh, creek beds. And the land was up real high, okay? But the, down in the, in the creeks, the creek dra drained out into the river. Okay, and it was a natural creek. It wasn't named. It didn't have a name. Uh, this creek wasn't that big. And it was just run off from the mountains, you know. And it was just a, just a natural little stream. And uh, a lot of times when it rained, it got full, you know, and it drained into the river. Well, this creek was a place where when the river did come up in the spring, we, you know, it flooded every spring and we, it, there was, there was garbage that would come in, you know, and we found the hood of a Volkswagen over there. And we don't know how it got there. We don't know if anybody dumped it there or if it's been, how long it had been there, but we found this Volkswagen hood. So we took it and made a sled out of it. <laughs> We had the best time in that in that hood of that that car. <laughs> that was so fun. Now those were the memories. Yes, they were. Uh, let's see. Um, slid on a piece of linoleum. Here you go. He put on a rope handles on it, so we were not sledding on snow. Oh, okay. Yeah, you could. When you had something big enough, like a, a car hood, <laughs> it didn't matter how much snow was on the ground, as long as it was slick and the ground was frozen. Yep, yep. I know what you mean, Lisa. There you go, Arlene. That's what we had, the hood of a, of a Volkswagen, because it was curved and it, was, it wasn't real big. And, you know, it wasn't long. It was a few years after that they started making the round disc, you know, the round disc uh, sleds that they buy. And we thought it was funny because we had we had our own. It was so funny. It really was. OK, I think I'm going to paint the back of the scenery here. I don't have anything glued down yet. This is just tacked down. Uh, should I paint it blue? 
paint, paint it blue. Um, maybe not dark blue, but a medium blue. A winter blue. I do have a, a this shade, cloudless. I think I'll paint it this. Yeah, we had a lot of time. Of course, there was five of us kids. So we always had somebody to play with, you know. And and I was the youngest, so I always had a big brother to help me. <laughs> help me carry my sled. Yeah, those were the days. They sure were. I'm going to see if I can't. I don't want to paint it. I'm going to paint it like wintry. It's not going to be solid. It's going to be wispy. Okay. What? What? Lisa... We never had tubes. Okay, Lisa, the land of enchantment. I was born and raised there. It was a great Christmas memory. Me too. We had a lot of Christmas memories. Wisconsin just re recently made it illegal to throw snowballs. Oh, my gosh. That's probably because kids were freezing them and probably throwing them through car windows. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, honey. We're doing a reverse collage on this other winter page. I'm getting started on it. I think I'm going to go ahead and do my snowflakes, too. And I'll do this. I also do. I'm going to do some snow. I'll do more, a little bit more snow down here. Well, if they were, if they were being naughty with the snowballs, uh, putting rocks in them or something like that, that can, I can understand it. The boys weren't allowed to be mean to the girls because. Daddy would get after him if they were mean to us girls. Because we, my sister and I were the youngest. So the boys had to be nice to us. <laughs> or they'd get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't in a casual place.
I'm sorry, my browser does that on me and I have no control. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. I lost a, a picture. I lost a I lost my Grinch. Okay. Um, I'm sorry I muted my computer takes over. No, I didn't do it on purpose. Um, uh, you know how you have Siri on, on your phone and stuff and you say, Hey Siri, look this up for me. Well, I've got something on my hard drive over here and you can, you can talk and type and, or ask it something and it takes, it takes over sometimes. I didn't do it. So thank you guys. Thank you for helping me. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good, Cheryl. Good, good, good. But I, I did a little bit of felting at the beginning of the video. So if you had missed it, you can go watch it. And I did I did a I did part of a dryer ball. And I, I started, I showed you how to start it real tight in, in the middle and roll it up felt, roll it up felt, roll it up felt until it got this big. And I'm going to add some more to it and make it a little bit bigger. And then we're going to decorate it next time. Yes, Debbie said hello to everybody who just came in. <laughs> hello, everybody. Hi, Sharon. And and I was going to send Sharon a needle and I'm going to lay it out right now. I, I didn't mail it out today like I was supposed to. I, I was going to mail you out one. And if anybody else needs a needle, you need to tell me or message me. OK. Um, I'll send you a needle and a little bit of felting uh, wool to go with it. So, but I did talk about a little bit of felting at the beginning of the show. I did the dryer ball and I talked about rules with your needle rules. <laughs> the rules are if your needle breaks, you have to stop what you're doing and find the broken part, <laughs> find the tip. Do not leave the tip in your work. Do not leave the tip in the couch, on the floor, anywhere. You got to find it, tape it onto some cardboard to dispose of it properly. Um, that's also at the beginning of the video. And then we, then we're doing a little bit of verse collage right now. And then I'm going to do a pick 10. So, um, I think uh, this would be a good time to let this dry and go into a pick 10 and I'll finish this up Tuesday. This is the other winter scene that we did. I'll give you a quick flip. We did, the we did the beach one last week. It seems like we did another one. Am I missing one? I might have. I don't remember. Uh, but anyway, since this is wet, I won't close it. I'll let this dry and we'll finish this up uh, Tuesday. Cheryl's wrapping gifts for tomorrow. Okay, she's going to have a little Christmas party tomorrow. I did post on my Facebook page this girl here, Sarah Renzulli, and she has a felting channel. She's awesome. You will learn some things from her. I'm going to let my book dry, and we'll do a pick 10. I haven't done a pick 10 forever in a day, so we'll do it. Uh, I do have my cards. I just have to dig them out. I think they're right here. Oh, they're on the list. I guess I have to know I got another deck. Here they are. I'll pick 10 from here. So who's going to play with me? Anybody? Anybody going to play with me tonight? And I have been working in this little uh, book that somebody sent me not too long ago. And uh, I can't remember who sent it to me. 
I made a batch of hibiscus dye. Oh, wow. It's lovely. Doing trims now. May do paper tomorrow. Wow, Suze. That's great. Is it pink? The hibiscus? Rules. Oh, I didn't get the rules. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have no choice in finding the needle. Yes. Uh huh. Well, the, the needles can break. These are metal, but they can break. This one's bent. I bent this one where I was too rough with it. And, and so uh, if you ever break your needle, you have to find this little sharp point. Those are the rules. So that you can throw it away properly. Put a piece of tape on it. Tape it to a piece of cardboard. Yeah, this little book was really cute. And I've been putting some of my leftover snippets in it. Uh, that I made uh, last week. So uh, I've started that. And I'm leaving it on my desk. So I can add some more to it. And tonight, since I have some ornaments here. I'm going to put an ornament in there. Because that's what we like to do. <laughs> we like to decorate our books. <laughs> so if you do something like that every day, your your book will be full. Okay. And we'll get my book out, my bingo book. This was a page that I did uh, the other day, and this was from uh, Lisa's, uh, one of Lisa's video where she uh, did a Bible, a little Bible devotion, and that's what I did on that. So tonight will be this page. And I'm going to put a piece of paper behind it. So so I don't make a mess like that. And I'm going to pick out 10 cards. I, I drink hibiscus in my tea. <laughs> I got some dried at the at the farmer's market. And you put a little bit of it in your tea. And it turns it a pink. And it gives it a little bit of a flavor of some sort. I'm not sure what it is. Hi, Sharon. Well, I'm glad you did, Sharon. I've been watching some of your videos. I was watching one today. And. I think I said something to you in the, oh, yeah, I said, I, hey, I can't stay. I got to go to the airport. That's what it was. Yeah, I was in your <laughs> stream this morning. Sharon uh, is just starting to video, guys. If anybody's interested in clicking on her, go right ahead. Let's see. Uh, Sharon videos and uh, Lisa at My Eclectic Life videos. And earlier, um, Sherry, uh, there was a Sherry in here. Her name is Sherry Habling, H-A-B-L-I-N-G. And she lives in Canada. And she streams sometimes. Sharon's in training. Okay, Sharon. Well, we can be your guinea pigs, Sharon. <laughs> you do fine. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so anyway, let me get 10 cards. And see what we have. We have to all learn sometimes, Sharon. <laughs> I did a few tests. And, um, and there is a way that you can go back and delete some of your videos if, if they're not, if you're training, you know, you're in training and stuff. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so, so don't be alarmed. If you have a, a video that you're not proud of, or you really, really don't like it, you can delete your own delete. You can delete your own videos. 
and I had a few where I was having problems with working technical stuff out and uh, or they didn't last more than 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, those kind of videos you don't need to keep. OK. It says to draw something. So I'm going to hang on to that and see what we can draw. I'm going to write them out real big on here so you can see it. One, one of them is to draw something. Maybe we'll get inspired by the other ones. Uh, use washi tape. And if you don't have washi tape, you can cut strips of collared paper. Oh, Suzanne makes a sweet cold beverage with her hibiscus. Tazo brand has hibiscus tea. Something like that. And you can't remember the name. Okay. Okay, Sharon, honey. Go eat your dinner. Talk to you soon. Okay, Cheryl's just watching. Then it says a transparent item. Now we can use, uh, we can use, we could do the transparent tape method. I do happen to have some transparencies here. And I can give you a little demo. We did these with transparent with packing tape and they and uh, we taped 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 it on a magazine and then you rub the, the paper off of the back. And these are done with packing tape. And uh, so this would be this would be considered a transparent item. You could also do something with tissue paper would be transparent, something that you could see through. This is done as a transparency. And then when you lay it down, you can see the dog. So I can use one of these. Uh, a transparent item. It could be vellum. It could be wax paper. It could be deli paper. And then it says to use brown paper. And they're talking about the brown paper bags or packing brown pa packing paper. So I don't I'm not quite sure uh, what we'll do with that. And then we could have a couple of alternates. And then it says use stickers. We all have some stickers. Words that start with your initial. Words with B. I'm just going to put words with B because I have, you know. Tear and add paper. Tear paper. T-O-R-N, torn paper. So it could be like a piece of music paper torn up and put on or something like that. Or uh, decorative paper, collared paper, magazine paper, newspaper, text paper, something like that. Tore paper. Your choice of techniques. So your technique... Um, would be like use a stencil, use a household item, uh, paint with the end of a straw, paint with the end of a, of a paintbrush, a technique, um, a sponge, uh, just to name a few, your technique. Use a colored pencil. So a colored pencil. If you don't have a colored pencil, you can use a crayon or a marker or something if you don't have one. Uh, 
use pattern paper. Pattern paper is your uh, sewing pattern, uh, sewing pattern paper. Okay. Then I'll pick a couple of alternates. Add a shape. A shape would be a circle or a, a square or a triangle. They could be cut out of paper. It could be drawn on. It could be doodled on. It could be stamped on. Uh, you can use a lid and make a circle shapes. Uh, add a shape. That's an alternate. Use four letter words. And they have to be good words. They cannot be bad words. So we have love, hope. And you all have to help me come up with four letter words. And they have to be good words. Use metallic. Now that could be gold, silver, copper, and it could be done with paper, with ink, with paint. Care is a good word. Okay, care. I'm making a list of four letter words. Metallic paint. And then the fourth alternate would be a hidden message. Now, if you hide a message on your page, you can you can be creative. Hugs. Okay. I got love. Thank you. Yeah, you could use your gold leaf. Good idea. I've got some gold leaf. I'm going to get it down because I don't get to use it very often. Good idea. So, uh, <clears throat> Wish is a good one, too. If you have to hide a message, we might be able to put a tip in and and it would be like hidden. And then if you do it first, I'm going to do that just to show you how it could be done. <laughs> I'll be your example. I'll be the guinea pig. My page is white. And I had another piece of white paper here, which I'm using. Well, that's all right. I can still use it. Nice kiss. Okay. I'll write those down. So... If you're going to hide a message on your page, I'm going to glue this down and then my message, but you have to lift it up to see the message. Oh, you were Suzanne. Oh, man, that's cool. Kind. Kind. Thank you. Hope. Draw. I think I got enough four-letter words for now. These are action words. Well, hope is too. Hope or draw is an action word too. But but these are but these are enough. Love, hope, care, hugs, wish, nice, kiss, kind. So I'm going to use this as my hidden message paper. And I'm going to work on it first. So I'm going to write these four letter words on my hidden message. So I'm using two alternates uh, for one of my 10. <laughs> so I'm just going to just use my ink pen and I'm going to write love. 
and then I'm going to turn and write hope. And then I'm going to turn and write care. And I'm going to turn and write hugs. And we'll turn and write nice. And I'm going to write wish. And then I'm going to write kiss. And then I'm going to write kind. Love, hope, care, hugs, wish nice kiss and kind and there's my hidden message but my message is going to be hidden in this direction but i'm not finished because i want to decorate it a little bit more hi arlene rest is a four letter word that i need <laughs> yes it is yes it is i just happened to pick this up so i'm going to use this this is a Delusion Shimmer Spray. There wasn't any, any color. So I can use any colors I want, I guess. And whenever you have anything that has mica in the bottom, they say it's best not to do this, but to do it back and forth. Uh, because the mica goes up into the um the straw and clogs it up so they say to to gently swirl it so i'm swirling until the mica gets done and it's just about done i think i got it all Now, yeah, I think I'll use the back of this for my spray. Woohoo! Everybody wants the rest one. <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. Can you see my hidden message? <laughs> it's hidden. It's hidden. That's my hidden message. I'm gonna, I was gonna just glue glue a corner of it down so that you we could lift it up but it's a hidden message all right that's that's a hidden message okay i did that one We did this one, and we did the four-letter words. Now, we have to draw something. And I'm going to draw with pencils, because we said wall, uh, colored pencils. Now, these colored pencils are ink-tense pencils, and the pigment is made up of ink. So I can activate it with a water brush afterwards. So let's draw something. What shall we draw? What shall I draw? What can inspire me? I was showing a... Showing off a, this little sticker earlier as an inspiration. Shall we draw one of these? Let's draw one of those. 
and it doesn't have to be in a brown we can use it we can use any color we want this is um it says it's pink on the on the collar but it's it doesn't look pink pink it looks like a plum pink I'm drawing something a little wobbly but that's all right it's a little wonky <laughs> so am i i'm a little wonky and he's got a uh, a bow tie on And I think what I'll do is I'll put that in gold. I'll use the bow tie in gold and his buttons. And his eyes. And his mouth. I can do those in gold too. Colored pencils. I'm concentrating. <laughs> I can't talk and draw at the same time. Let me get another collar going on here. This one's red. You could write it in black marker, I think. Christmas trees. Mm. Okay. He's. I'm going to do some little lines and make them look like stitches. He has dot on his. They're just dots. But I'm going to do straight lines and pretend it's thread. I should do real thread. That's what I should do. If somebody dared me, I'd sew it in red in real thread with the real sewing machine. So needle and thread. I would. I could. I could. I'd have to have a dare. Lisa. <laughs> okay. That's all I needed. I think I'm going to use black thread, though, when I do it. I'll do it in black thread. You just want to see me do it. Just to see how I'm going to go about it. <laughs> I think it would be fun. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just love a good challenge. <laughs> I do. Joan, Joan's going to double dare. Oh, my gosh. Giovanna, a double dog dare you. All right. I am happy. Oh, I am so happy. <laughs> Let me find my needle. <laughs> I'm going to use a sharp one. Uh, I even had some black thread here, but I'm going to get a bigger piece. Oh my gosh, guys. I love you all. This is great. This is perfect. This is what I live for. I do.
I got to get to my thread though. <laughs> How about green? Ooh, that'd be red and green for Christmas. And before I start, I think I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> I won't. I won't do that. I can't. There's no there's no North Pole down here. I am going to activate my ink uh, before I sew it. This is a water brush and it just has water in it. And if you squeeze a little bit, water will come out the tip on the it's a they're plastic. It's plastic. It's a plastic tip brush, plastic fibers, and uh, I need to wipe it off because it's showing blue. I don't want to share my too much of the colors. It might get show a little bit of blue, but for the most part. Uh, so I'm activating my ink tense pencils, and the ink that is the colored part of the pencil is its ink. And when you wet it with the brush, it activates the ink to bleed, like bleeding tissue paper. And then when you dry it, it will dry permanent once you activate it. I don't know that you can, you might be able to reactivate it if you were to get it wet again. Uh, but eventually it will dry permanent, like permanent ink. And I'm sure that you can still move it a little bit after depending on how thick or how hard you draw with your pencil. And that's all that I know about ink tints. But there's my, my gingerbread man. I used pencils so I can mark that off. Put the brush on my lid on my brush and I keep it with my ink tints pencils so I'll always know where it is hopefully so I drawed a gingerbread man and I use colored pencils now there is it says a technique so this sewing is a technique I can count it as one of my uh, prompts Uh, they can be pricey. I got an inexpensive uh, set at Walmart. Cheryl's back. Okay. You're a pencil junkie? Okay. Je uh, Deb says they will not reactivate after you wet, wet them and let them dry once, once dried. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Janice. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> you've, it's been a while since you visited. Yes, it has been. Glad to see you tonight. <laughs> Glad to see you. Hello, everybody coming into the room. We're doing a, a, a pick 10, and I have been double dog dared. I've been double dog dared. They double dared me to do some sewing. Oh, don't worry about your typing, Joyce. I can read it. It's called it's called typish. And it says hello. So I could read it, Joyce. Don't you fret none. Oh, uh, okay. Sue Sue said she didn't her Walmart doesn't carry ink tents pencils in the craft department. 
they're not in the school department they're in the craft department and yes you should be able to get them online so my dare the dare typeanese that's right sue i love typeanese so my this is my inspiration for the drawing <laughs> <laughs> and I might as well put him on here after we're done. Here's my hidden message. I'm hiding it. So I am going to go up underneath here and try to, to sew on top of my <laughs> gingerbread man. And uh, we're doing it because we can. So this is this is my art page, and I can do anything I want. And look how easy it's it's doing. I'm just doing it real slow, slow and easy. I have sort of have to guess where I want to poke my next hole. <laughs> And I made an extra hole, but I'm going to use it right now. This reminds me of when I was a little kid, when I was a little girl, and we had those sewing cards, and you had a piece of yarn, and you and it was that big bulky twisty yarn, real chunky yarn, and it and it had a it had a shoe tip. A plastic thing on the end of it like a sh on the end of your shoestrings and you would sew and sew. I remember those I think she was talking about the ink tense pencils uh, Cheryl um, and uh, sometimes depending on where you live uh, you might have a Walmart that doesn't have a lot of stuff. And I have been in those areas before. I'm trying to think where I was. I was at a Walmart one time. And they, they didn't have a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> Crochet thread. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody got any extra ones? Any extra pencils, colored pencils and things? I'm sewing. I'm sewing. I brought some of those sewing cards for your kids. Yeah. And they hated them because they were supposed to undo it and then redo it again. Yeah. Yeah. Ink tents. That's right, Sue. It might have been. It, I, I, it was it was in a small I was in a small town and I cannot remember for the life of me where I was. And they didn't have a whole lot of stuff in that Walmart. It wasn't a full-blown size. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a super Walmart. It was before the super Walmarts. Um, that's when it was. You know, back before they, they supersized all the Walmarts, I think they're all supersized now. Uh, but this was, a, this was a Walmart in a little town that didn't have a whole lot. The town was small and this and the walmart wasn't very big and they didn't have a lot of stuff in it like they do now at the super walmarts so now they're no more nationalized and organized and stocked but i can remember uh a walmart um uh, in the town that I, I I came from in Ashland, Kentucky, there was a Walmart and it was in part of the mall. And 
and it wasn't a super Walmart yet. This was just a regular old fashioned Walmart. And um, and then they moved and they built the new super Walmart up on the hill and supersized it. You know, so they were like renting the space from the mall. And uh, it wasn't a super Walmart. It, it didn't have all the stuff it has nowadays. And yes, they wear me out too. Totally. I'm sewing. I'm stitching. I'm going to make them a gold leafed bow tie next yes the fabric department is slowly uh fading away the fabric department and they and our and ours they're uh, they still have fabric and the cutting table and everything there but then they also have another aisle where everything is all of the the fabric is sold one yard at a time and it's already pre-cut People just don't sew like they used to anymore. Yep, I got my sewing machine over here, and um, I want to. I've been trying to get to it for a couple of months. <laughs> it's on the edge of the countertop here, and I wanted to sew sew in my fabric journal. Uh, I started a fabric journal that Lisa started a couple of months ago, and it's still sitting over here, ready for me to sew in it. And. Uh, Holidays came and Thanksgiving came and, and I had to uh, put it on the back burner. It happens, but I'll get to it eventually. So, I'm almost done. I've got half of them done. Does that count? Let's see if I can't speed it up. I'm going as fast as I can. Let's see if I can't double it up without tearing my paper. Make bigger stitches. So I sent one daughter home. She's home in Kentucky, freezing. And I've got the other daughter here uh, tonight. And she's going to stay until Monday. And I'm surprised she hadn't come in here to see what we were doing. But she's with her daddy. And poor little Abby. She was in here. I don't see her unless she's over by the door. She is wore out with all the company that we've had. <laughs> she's definitely not used to all the company. <laughs> She's plum tuckered out. Let's see, I can do the gold next.
I could do some torn paper. Try to plan out what I'm going to do. Yes, she is a Danny's girl. She sure is. They just got back from the Caribbean on a cruise. So I'm sure they're tired. And then they went over to Orlando today to, to do some sightseeing. Just as soon as they got off the boat. So I'm sure they're wore out. One more day trip. They're having fun. That's what they want to do. I'm not going to have enough thread. That's okay. Maybe I can tie a knot. Tie a knot on it. Almost done. <laughs> I know. That would be great. Except they all have jobs and schools and so forth. They're attached. I think that'll work. They're attached. They got family up there. In-laws. And their mother, their mother is up there. There's a couple of extra holes. Okay, I'm on the last stitch. There you go. I did it. I got to tie another knot. That'll do it. Cut this baby off. Cut her loose. Trim her tails. Thank you guys. That was cool. 
No, it's just embroidery thread. <laughs> I know. I did get my my uh, the daughter that left today. She she really did my flower bed, and it was big. It was a lot all the way around. It was three sides around the pool. And I was so tickled to death to get that done. Oh, my gosh. And we got the garage cleaned out. So also in January, I can't do it this month. I'm going to get out there in the garage and get my pottery fixed up so that we can do pottery. Yee Woohoo! <laughs> now, I've got some uh, particular glue. It's it's a it's the type of glue it it dries clear and sticky and then you put your uh, gold flake on it you you so I have to put this on first and let it sit for a few minutes and then when it gets tacky I will put the gold flake on it and I'm going to do his eyes and his mouth in a uh, gold flake. And I, this is, ex, I'm experimenting. I am experimenting with this because I've only used it one other time. And I'm not quite sure I did it right. So we're going to try it again. So I've got uh, three buttons, a bow tie, and his mouth and his eyes are going to be in gold. I got to let that dry tacky. And then I'm going to put this gold leaf on it. And I have gold. Oh, I could do copper for Lisa. I'll do copper since uh, Lisa's in here tonight. And she likes she likes copper. So I'll, I'll get it out in just a few minutes. So I'm going to do... Um, I can mark the stitching, the sti technique. I did a technique, and uh, it called for um, metallic, and it said use metallic. So I'm going to use the copper for that for my metallic. And then, what else can we do? We got washi tape left to do, and I would kind of like to want to paint around this, <clears throat> and I think I will. I think I'll use my watercolors. And last week, or week before, I can't remember now, I bought me a new set of watercolors. This is my first set of watercolors and I got the Walmart brand and um, I got some clean water and I got a nice brush and um, I'm going to use a little bit of this to decorate the background. Uh, what background, what color of background do you want? Hi, Kathy. Okay, that's fine, Kathy. We're doing well. We're doing a pick 10, and I'm in the middle, uh, middle of painting the background of this gingerbread man. So, yeah, welcome. Hi, everybody. If I haven't said hi to you, I'm saying hi to you now. What we'll color background you all want to put on the back of this guy? Shall we do blue? I've got blue and I've got um, some purple. This is a pretty blue. It's like a beachy, beachy color. green I can mix it with this green right here make it a blue green Ooh, I like that idea and a little bit of purple 
Oh, it's international brand. Okay, Suzanne. Well, it is an in international brand, but it Walmart sold it. I bought it at the Walmart at my local Walmart. That's what I meant. It wasn't a Walmart brand. You're right, Suzanne. I bought Dollar Rowdy Rowdy watercolors. This is my very first watercolor set, and um. And so I'm not uh, an expert at it yet, but I'm getting there. I'm going to put a little bit of purple in there, too. Okay. And I'm going to water, uh, put a little bit of water on my paper. And then I'm going to add my collar. And I'm just going to do a little watercolor y, uh, casual painting around him he's just going to be casual just casual and uh, it's not going to be anything special but it will be special when I'm done And this is just regular mixed media paper. It's uh, it's the XL brand. And um, I'm going to put some purple in it too. Just a little collar. He looks like he's running away from the baker. Run, run, run as fast as you can. <laughs> I think he's having fun, you know. He got he got some new threads on. <laughs> new threads. Because I sewed them. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my gosh, guys. Did you all catch that? Lisa, I gave him some new threads. <laughs> I can't see the paint now. I'm crying. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That was pretty cool, I have to say. You can't bake me, bakers, man. <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to do for that. I'm just not... I love watercolor. I love the pastels. Um, but I I just can't leave it alone. <laughs> Golden Professional Artist Brand Fluid Paints. Oh, you're going to share some? Okay. Okay, yeah, I'll try them out. Um I'm a, I'm a bad about not wanting to leave it alone, you know, and, and that's one of my problems with uh, painting uh, with watercolors. So if I stop right now, <laughs> I'm going to stop right now and go lay a tissue on top.
Um, Ta-da! I think it looks good. I like it. And I need I need to do something with the gingerbread man too. How about if I put some brown in there? I've got uh, a light. I got the or uh, the okra, and then the chestnut color, and then I got another darker brown. I'm gonna try this middle brown. I I've got the tube underneath uh, in the drawer. It's a burnt sienna, I think. So I'm just going to put a little burnt sienna here. Just to give him a little color. I have no idea what that lumpy part is. Oh, it's not lumpy. It was a hole. It was a needle hole. It looked like a lump of glue or something there. And it was, it was, the, it was a needle hole that I poked in the paper and I misjudged and I took it back and made another hole. Oh, Lord. Oh, goodness gracious. Beth. One of these days. One of these days. Put a little brown on his face. Give him some rosy cheeks. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, dry this. Get this dry a little bit. Then I'll put the gold on next. The uh, flakes. The copper. Good night, Cheryl or Kathy. Night, Kathy. Okay. Take care. <laughs> He's looking good. Looking good. I'm going to get my copper out. And uh, get ready for that. So these, the buttons and the eyes where I put that uh, special glue, it doesn't dry all the way. It dries to be tacky. And then you can lay uh, these flakes on it. And I'm going to use copper. So I could just... Probably tear a piece off. And then, <laughs> I got it on me. I was hoping it would stick down. But it's not sticking very good. It's got to dry, I guess, a little more. It's not doing what I want it to do. I'm just not having very good luck. <laughs> it's sticking to me instead.
anyway you let this dry and then and then you go over it with a uh, a dry paintbrush and it's supposed to burnish it down and um, that's all I know about it so uh, yes I'll get a dry stiff paintbrush Sue good good idea use this suggestion your left over flakes Yes, um, I'll do that. I have a little jar that I I do that with. This is my silver, and I have I have my leftovers here, but I'm not using enough of the copper that I want to that I'm worried about saving. So I think we'll be okay. I'm not using a an abundant amount. I'm just trying to get it to stick. So anyway, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit more. And we're gonna do another prompt and let's see what else we can do. Um, uh, we talked about. Oh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, pattern paper, torn paper, words with a B, use stickers, brown paper bag, transparent items. What did I do with that little dog that I said I was going to use? This one over here. Let's see if I can't use him. This is a, uh, a little doggy that I did a transparent tape on and I stuck it down to a piece of pink paper for storage and he's even though the pink paper is still on there I can still use him and he will show up. Shall we have a friend? Shall we use him as a friend? And this will be my transparent prompt. Good night, Lisa. See you later. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we're on the right track. So I did my transparency item. And I'm thinking maybe some stickers. I might be able to find some stickers. I might be able to find some stickers, but I'm glad I got to use the transparencies. That was fun, and I do have happen to have a gingerbread house. I think it should go right up there. Good night, Sharon. I think I'm going to do it. There it is. This is a uh, a little extra 
an extra prompt that goes with the uh, the page tonight. So there, the gingerbread man in the house. Let's see if I got any stickers in here that I might be able to use. It seems to me that I might have something that might go with don't know for sure till I look a little further. I haven't been in this drawer for a while. Letters. I could write, I could spell something out. Uh, words with a B. I can put, um, spell something out. If those are printed, they're not stickers. And looking I'm a looking finding the right thing ooh what are these those will go good on my on my other page <laughs> they're going into the the reverse collage page rabbit trail uh-huh Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Okay, I'm not having any luck in that bin. I thought I had some more stickers. I got some new stickers and I put them somewhere where I wouldn't forget them. And I found them not too long ago, and then I forgot where I put them again. Don't you just hate that? <laughs> They're not in here. But here's some pattern papers. I can use those. For my, one of my prompts is pattern papers. if this is ready yet I've got to do the mouth Well, I tell you, I didn't do a very good job <laughs> with this uh, gold paper, but I tried. I tried. <laughs> Thank you for your for encouraging words. It never worked for you either. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Now it says uh, 
torn paper. You stickers. I want to find my stickers. Where are all my stickers? I had a whole bunch of them with lots of different stuff. What did I do with them? One of these days, I'll come across them again, and then I will, I'll remember where I put them and to forget about them again. All right, what else do we can do here? Add shapes. Add shapes. Shall we add some shapes? We could add some triangles with our pattern paper. There's triangles. Shall we add some triangles? Yeah, we can add some triangles. I did. I put them in a special place so I wouldn't forget them. They might be in a box uh, in my closet. I've been putting things in the closet and um, to give me more room up here by the desk. And uh, I probably did that if I go over there in my closet and look. So I'm putting triangles down of pattern paper. So that's two prompts right there. How about that? And I did two of the alternates, two or three of the alternates. So let's see what we can do here. Okay, I did pattern paper. I did triangles. I've done gold leaf metallic. I've done, let me see my list here. What else? Have I done enough? I did the torn paper and pattern paper. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Words with a V. Use stickers. I was going to use stickers. Oh, I could use some washi tape. Let me find some washi tape. I might find some that are Christmassy. That looks cute. Okay. I got lots of washi tape to choose from. There's 
birds. And I kind of like these here. This has got some different things on it. It's got balloons and and uh, those things that you say things like emojis. And I'm just going to tear some of these up randomly and put down. I kind of like the colors. They're fun collars, pastel. Okay, I use washi tape. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. <laughs> Cheryl's tired. Okay. So that makes me 10. That makes 10 things on my page. But I would like to say, say one little thing. And um, let's see. I'm going to put this on there. This came from some happy mail that somebody sent me recently. And they sent them to me on these uh, fun cards. These little happy mail cards. And I'm going to put this on there. And I typed it up on, my, on the computer. And I'm going to put it right here on my hidden message. We'll put it right there. A friend is a person who listens, listens attentively while you say nothing. That's a friend. And we're done. We're done. So, we got a nice little thing. Oh, here's a sticker. I could put a red bird on there. A little red bird talking to the man. So I found a sticker. There we go. So all is not lost. There he is talking to the bird. Ta-da! How about that? Pick 10, December the 7th. Okay. Then I suppose I do not have a friend because I'm always saying something. <laughs> now, Teresa. Hi, Teresa. I don't think I even said hello to you. Hi, girl. Well, but but sometimes 
we do we our friends friends are silent sometimes and they let you they let you vent and see i think that you guys are my friends because i vent you see and you can't talk back except in chat <laughs> so you kind of listen yeah <laughs> i did i think i got enough of them in that matters so thank you for the challenges. We used a sticker. I like it. <laughs> well, that's okay, Teresa. And you know what? What the, some of my best friends. We talk at the same time and we're listening at the same time and we're both talking at the same time and <laughs> it's great because <laughs> we're both vent venting. <laughs> uh, so I used all of these, the four letter words. I hid a message. There's my, well, the words are hidden. The mess, oops, better dry that first. But I think we did a good job on that pick 10. So that's all I'm going to do tonight. It's 9:30. Oh, good. Yes, I, I saw that, Tracy. You you posted a picture with the uh, cluster. Oh, chatty Kathy. Ah. <laughs> that's cute, Teresa. Well, with Joycey, we love you too, honey. So anyway, guys, I'm glad you came to, to play with me and uh, goof off with me. We did this. We made we made a dryer ball. We reviewed a little bit of felting techniques. We did a reverse collage. Let me get my reverse collage up here for you to see. One more time before I sign off. I'll take a picture of it and put it on my Facebook page. We played a game. We got some things ready for our next collage. I didn't finish the reverse collage. But we started it. It was this one. So it's going to be a snow scene. And... Uh, and I've got the snowflakes to put on it. Woohoo! So we'll do this one uh, Tuesday. So uh, Tanya, uh, Tanya will be on tomorrow sometime, and Lisa will be on Monday, and then I'll be on Tuesday. And I'm sure there's some other girls that are streaming too. So. I'm sure you know who they are, who you like to watch. And I'm going to be busy with with family for the next two days. I've got two more days of family time. And uh, so this was a good session. So, uh, I'm going to say good night and I'll see you all Tuesday. Uh, that's all I know. Oh, Teresa got extra needles. Good, Teresa. Will you hang on to your needles because they will break. You, they will break. If you do any, any felting, watch some of the videos. And, um, and you know maybe do do some practicing you could make a heart maybe so uh a dryer ball <laughs> oh so joyce talking about her brother okay Okay, Suzanne, thank you guys for coming in. Well, Teresa, I, I did talk a little bit about the sizes 
Uh, when I ordered these, when I ordered my needles, I got small, medium, and large. So uh, the they they're still kind of the same size. The large ones I think are thicker, and I don't know if it's the larger number or the smaller number. Uh, so I would start with the thickest needle, the heaviest needle, and 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 till you get used to the stabbing. Okay, see you Tuesday, Cheryl, if not before. Uh, and then save the tiniest needles for your delicate work, your uh, when you're doing eyes and delicate things. So I would start with the, the heaviest needle that you have, Teresa. So, uh, yes, Joyce, we're sorry, honey. So, uh, everybody have a good day tomorrow. Have a good evening, rest of the night. And thank you for coming in and watching me and playing. Oh, good, Teresa. Okay. If you want to take a picture of your uh, felting items and post them in my on my page, that might help some of the other girls out, Teresa. Thanks. Just make a little display of all of them. In, you know, flare them out a little bit, take a picture of them and put them on. And, um, and we can talk about it. And you got a kit. Good. Great, Deb. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I did too. So uh, I'm going to go and spend some time with my family now. And I'll see you all soon, if not beforehand. Message me if you have any questions. And I appreciate all of y'all. Thanks for helping me do this. <laughs> it was fun. He's a cutie pie. So I'm going to say goodnight. <laughs>